Check, check. Microphone, check. We are live. Are we live? Mic check. How's everybody doing out there? It's Real Tough Candy back online with you guys today. 100 plus resources to learn to code to free. Learn to code to free. Learn to code for free. Before I get into this, I have an hour to go all through these. Uh, I could easily spend eight or nine hours talking about this stuff. I'm going to list them off, but then I'm going to talk about a few in particular I think are per particularly helpful. Let's check in with everybody and see how you guys are doing. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this live stream tonight is because I know a lot of us are at home right now. We're bored. It's a great time to learn how to code and up these skills. You don't have to spend money. Um, I already got a great question from someone in the live chat I want to talk about. Um, I'll get to it eventually. It's about tutorial hell. This person said they learned um, or checked out multiple resources on this list. And right now they're in tutorial hell. It happens to the best of us, my friend. We're going to talk about that. Before we do, let's check in with everyone on the live stream. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? Can you guys see the screen? How we doing out there? How's everybody? Hey, Chiquito, how's it going? Your average programmer checking in. Howdy. Stylo816, JM. And everyone else joining the stream. Welcome, new members. Glad you guys could make it. I had a great day yesterday as far as just upping the channel. I had, it is a nearly two hour technical interview with two junior developers. That is going to be premiering tomorrow on the channel. Um, you're probably going to get a notification. Hopefully you are if you're subscribed and hit the bell notification. We're going to be doing, doing a premiere on that. It's two hours of two junior developers doing a mock technical interview. Um, I was there. Lucien Mendel is the interviewer. Just, just such energy that entire two hours. And I think it's something the channel has been really needing. Technical interviews are, are a significant component in our developer journey for a lot of us. Um, and so we're going to talk about it. We're going to go through it tomorrow and do that premiere. Tonight's live stream, however, we're going to change gears and back up. Before you can get to that technical interview or inter in any interview, you got to learn how to code. Fortunately and unfortunately for aspiring developers, there are literally thousands of resources out there. Uh, page upon page. You could just go through the first page on Google, uh, type in learn how to code and be totally overwhelmed. Now I put together this list to for a few reasons. Number one, we're in a time right now where a lot of people have time to spare. This is a great opportunity and I've been really inspired to seeing all these people uh, stuck at home doing something with their lives instead of just like, yeah, this sucks. Guess I'll go, you know, waste some time on Twitter, AKA fireme.com. Like I swear to God, dude, every time I log on, it's just like, I'm not even, I have three, I'm following three people on there and my blood pressure is just, <laughs> Twitter always manages to just put me over the edge. Uh, so wasting time on social media sites when we could be doing other stuff, a lot of people are taking advantage of that and they want to know, okay, where can I start? So that was a big inspiration for putting together this list. Now there's no way in H-E double hockey sticks, hockey sticks, A-O, no way in H-E double hockey sticks, you're going to be able to get through all of these. This list is meant for you to pick and choose. And I don't write, I didn't write a lot for each of these. There are some photos here and there. They're alphabetized and based on discipline. Um, so we have some general HTML and CSS, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, Git and GitHub, the list goes on. Pick and choose and explore. And if something just, you're just not feeling it, I just try something else. Now, unfortunately, um, the resources that I find to be just absolutely mind blowing, most of them do cost money. That doesn't mean this list sucks or is substandard. You just have to be a little pickier. And I would say, I would recommend just auditing different sites before you commit. Because I know when I was first starting out, I had my, my bevy of free sites. And even I wasn't, some of them I really wasn't feeling. 
but I thought, well, it's just because I'm new and all of this is overwhelming. Guys, a lot of sites and applications out there just aren't for you, and that's okay, because there's 500 others. At the same time, however, you gotta be careful because if you are jumping from platform to platform to platform, nothing is really gonna stick. So to combat that, I have um, the little candy icon here. These are my top picks. And in, um, for the rest of the stream, this is not gonna be an eight hour stream. This is gonna, I'm gonna try and wrap it up around nine o'clock in about an hour. Um, I'm gonna go over this list and then focus on the ones where I have my little candy icon where I think a lot of developers can get the most value. So on a related note, I had a question here in the live stream. Hey, Donovan, how's it going? Um, Gutham asked, will you be sharing a link to all the sites? Yes, Paradoodly Do is the moderator for tonight's chat. Um, and she's going to be listing that. And she just, she just posted it uh, a few above there. Idris says, hi there, love your channel. Thanks for joining me, Idris. What's up, Cheryl? Good evening, brand new. Welcome to the channel, Cheryl. Alex is here. Vlaslo, my guy Vlaslo, working remotely for who knows how long. Build your own projects to escape tutorials hell. Indeed, indeed. So let's talk about this question. JM says he's used EDX, IBM, Coursera, Harvard, CS50, Stanford Online, BitDegree, Eduonics, Free Code Camp, some Code Academy, Top Coder, Hacker Rank, and maybe a few others. Feels like I'm stuck in tutorial hell. Every self taught developer has been there, and there are fortunately many ways to get around that. Uh, as Vlaslo suggested, um, building some projects. Now this can be a hard thing to do as a newbie because we have these awesome ideas and we just don't have the technical skills to implement them yet. Um, but keep dreaming and, and keep noting these things and try as you can, try as hard as you can to build these things, um, but that can be a tough thing to do, uh, create projects from your own brain. Um, it's much easier to go to a, a online course and take their projects and build them. Um, but sometimes it still doesn't feel like you're really getting anywhere. I did a video the other week, um, a couple days ago actually, of whatever, it was like 90 some or 70 some uh, projects. That repo, Paradoodly do. if you're watching this, can you share that GitHub repo for my last video with all those project ideas? If not, don't worry about it. Um, I'll try to find it later and post it or, or pin it somewhere in the comments, but get check out that repo. The person who produced that repo is a, a product man manager for Microsoft Edge. Uh, she's got the hardest job in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but these ideas are just killer. They are, they're really great prompts. And some have some really great ideas there. The other thing I can recommend, and this is, this is the important one, this is absolutely vital. You've heard this a lot, and I want to stress it. You have to get out of your comfort zone. What do I mean by that? You have to start interacting with developers, developers on your level, very absolute new developers, and developers who are more senior than you. You have to start reaching out to these people and getting involved in the community. Otherwise, it just feels like a big bubble. And then you really feel like you're not getting anywhere. Once you start working on projects with other people, even just talking uh, with another person using technical terms, that's gonna change for you because it's no longer this insular thing where it's all internal and you're this, you know, this coding cowboy or cow, cow wrangler, I don't know, coding commando. You're not doing it by yourself anymore and it, your people around you are gonna be breathing life into your coding journey and they're gonna have feedback, they're gonna have advice, they're gonna have some insight that maybe you've never even thought of. And one thing, Donovan can back me up on this. I've interviewed Donovan. He is, he is truly a channel MVP. This guy has been on my blog so many times. He has a little piece of candy next to his name in the chat because he's, he's a supporter of um, the YouTube channel. He's just always has so much to share. And I know he does a lot of volunteer work with Code Newbies. Um, go to meetups. Go to tech meetups. You, I could talk about these free resources until I'm blue in the face. I could do a 24-hour stream. You guys could study for 72 hours straight. 
build some projects, go through the videos, go through the interactive code editors, heck, even study some uh, cybersecurity or data science while you're at it and maybe read some blogs. You could do all that and still be on step zero because you're not growing, you're just absorbing. And what going to meetups does for you is that it exposes you to real world software development, real world web development. There are speakers there who talk about things like uh, JavaScript, new technologies. There's, there's JavaScript meetups, there's CSS and HTML meetups, there's uh, framework specific meetups. Even if in your, you're in a smaller town, try and check anyway, meetup. I don't know if it's meetup.com or meetup.org, um, but any city, at least in North America, is going to have a meetup, and they're all around the world. Um, maybe even think about starting a meetup. That's some, that's some dev power right there. That is some killer dev power um, if you don't have a, a web developer meetup of any kind in your area. I think there is a fee to start one, um, but hopefully it's nominal. I don't know how much it is, um, but it's something to think about. Go to meetups if in your, you're in tutorial hell. Get some feedback. Stick yourself out there. And I know it's kind of, of course, yeah, yeah, it's easy for you to say. Like, it's not because I am uh, an introvert. It doesn't come natural to me to extend myself to people and introduce myself and tell people that, hey, I'm a software developer. I need help with this, this and that. But I started going to co I started going to meetups and it changed everything. People are real nice. And you know what? These are the party faithful. What I mean by that is these are people who work 40 to 70 hours a week, maybe even more in software development, and they're taking time out of their personal time to go to a software related gathering. These people are serious about it and they are welcome. Most of them are very welcoming to new people in the industry. So I, I really can't emphasize that enough. And people like Donovan, Donovan, I, I hope you're here to uh, emphasize these meetups. So much more than coding alone. Exactly, exactly. And you can find people on your level. Not everyone at meetups is has been coding for 10, 20 years. Yeah, the featured speaker may have six or seven years experience or maybe 20 years. You know, they're just there to share their knowledge. Um, but I cannot, I mean, it, it, I cannot tell you how helpful they are for um, beginner developers and everyone. It's a great community builder um, and great for networking too. You know, get some free business cards printed up. Uh, if you're looking for a job, start handing those out to people you meet at meetups. Just phenomenal opportunities. Uh, for, for developers of any level, even if I was going to them before I even knew what a variable was. And I went to my first con, my first conference, Open Source North, which unfortunately has been canceled as has life for the next couple months. Uh, my first meetup was Open Source North and I understood nothing, but it was a game changer. Okay, with that out of the way, let's go over some of these resources, okay? Now, Paradoodly, can you, Paradoodly, can you share that link again so people can follow along with this article? Um, and if you want, this article is a permanent fixture. It's going to be pinned on my landing page over at realtoughcandy.com. This was just published today. It took me, it took me and my employee four straight days of researching because I have a full-time employee now. Technically, this person's a contractor, but employee, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Uh, 40 hours a week. So we spent a considerable amount of time researching, um, formatting, curating, styling, and all this stuff. So I don't know where I was going with that other than uh, this isn't going anywhere. This is going to be a permanent fixture, and it's going to be updated uh, as I see fit. If some of these links, some of these resources end up changing and stuff, yeah, this is going to be maintained. So definitely, um, this is going to be something you'll want to bookmark because this, this list is not only relevant right now, it's going to be regularly maintained. Let's talk about some free resources uh, in the general category. So again, we're going to talk about in depth, um, some of the ones that I particularly find helpful. Um, but you know, Maybe something else on here tickles your fancy. Code.org 
This is for, this is geared towards kids and young adults. This is something that was great that I discovered through this entire, uh, this gathering, information gathering process is that um, there are multiple resources for kids and young adults. Um, in fact, even someone in my Discord shared a resource they were using to help teach their daughter how to code. Uh, stuck at home, you know, all these kids don't have school. Probably a lot of kids aren't going back to school this year. Um, this is a great way to get kids interested in something productive and, you know, it expose them to coding. Code.org is um, you build games while learning computer science. And it's actually a really popular site. Um, if you're an educator or know someone who is an educator, maybe refer them to this site. Over 74 million code.org projects created. Like, this is great. This is great to see that legitimate sites exist for young coders, um, especially now that we have the web, the miracle of the web. If you have an internet connection, you can learn how to code. And that is just so powerful. Learning software development, learning how this stuff works, building things, getting creative. Um, and there are more sites on this list that cater to young adults, uh, but this is the first one that is in this list. Codecademy. I've talked about Codecademy in a few videos of mine. Um, they have an interactive code editor. Good for very good for absolute beginners. I used Code Academy a few times early on. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I can't talk about all these. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. There's Coder Byte, Code Wars. Code Wars is kind of cool. Uh, my favorite part about this application is um, the fact that they have these just a diverse selection of languages. So yeah, they have your standards. They have JavaScript. P PHP is actually even hard to find as far as um, training with that language and building your skills. Very hard to find good PHP resources or just any that are that are modern. But languages like Crystal, Clojure, CoffeeScript, uh, what else? These most of these on here are you know you've heard of F Sharp. You don't hear about that that one that much, but that's neat. And then we have stuff like Elm, um, CFML. Is that mach ML markup language? Machine learning. Mother-in-law, BF, Agda. There's some, there's some cool stuff here, some esoteric stuff, um, and not so, not so popular. So that's neat too, NIM. And basically you use this, you challenge yourself on what they call kata. Um, anybody here subscribe to coding with, is it Code Garden? I actually have him listed here. Let's see, Code Garden or not. Is it CSS? Coding Garden with CJ. Anybody here subscribed to Coding Garden with CJ? He does, uh, he live streams Code Wars Katas. He also has other videos and many live streams. Um, I have a whole YouTube section here, but he does some pretty cool stuff uh, with the Katas. Uh, where were we? Code Wars, Coursera. I'm not gonna get into a lot of these. You guys can check this out at your leisure. Edibit. This is one I hadn't heard of uh, prior to researching this. This is another trend that I'm seeing is gamification of this, of, of software development. It's very cool to see a lot of people learn well with games. They're engaging. You can do a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of just lighthearted. And I think that's something that a lot of us are afflicted with. This is a very serious platform, or not serious platform, this is a very serious career field. Software development is serious. It's a professional career field. It's like, you know, you don't see lawyers and doctors making training websites with cartoons or, you know, stuff that's accessible. Like this is the one career field that's professional where you can have some fun with it. It is serious, it is serious, but you can have some fun with it. Um, and this is one of those examples where it is a little lighter hearted. You do get the interactive challenges of learning the basics of how to code, but then makes it kind of fun. Little green monster with dork glasses. Why not? Why not? Okay, let's go back here. Educative. This is one that I starred. Why re RTC do you keep mentioning educative? Well, I really like their interactive coding environments and I like 
how interactive it is. It's not just the coding environment. Um, there are courses they offer here with multiple languages on different tabs. The organ what I'm saying is the organization is excellent. I think the course diversity is very good. I think the layout is great. It's a wonderfully clean interface. And what's more, they have free courses. Um, here's, this is a really cool project. Now this is what I'm talking about with very specific titles in their library of courses. Uh, this is a free one, Building Tesla's Battery Range Calculator with React and Redux. I've talked about this project before on the channel, but I just think it's rad. This free interactive course is designed to teach how to create com complete applications using React and Redux, Building Tesla's Battery Range Calculator. You do need to understand the basics of React, but other than that, this course takes you through the steps required to build each component, how to handle user interaction, and how to create cool animations. Um, and here, this is what I'm just talking about with this organization. You know exactly what you're getting into. So this is actually a free preview. I'm not even signed in. Um, but they, it, the consistency of the design for all these different courses, because Educative, they have, they have courses they produce in-house, but they also have a huge collection of instructors uh, who produce courses as well. So they actually, the only reason um, I found out about this platform is because one of their people approached me and was like, hey, RTC, do you want to produce a course? And it just wasn't a good time. And they approached me again and I was like, okay, I'll give it a thought. And it's just, I just don't have the time right now. I wish I did. I wish I could claim uh, instructor status at Educative, but I just don't have the time. But anyways, that's how I discovered it. And I, um, yeah. The rest is history. Uh, this is this is an example of a interactive code editor, and you can run it right in the browser. And this is good. This course itself right here is not newbie friendly because you do, you do need to know some React. Um, but okay, I suppose I could like code the right answer. Oh, sweet, it ran. This course is not code newbie friendly. Um, but there are other ones like introduction. I think there's a free intro to HTML and CSS. Just go to their site and type in free courses and a, a couple will pop up. Um, but yeah, this is a cool project. And to bring me to the point of this list, um, even though all this stuff here is completely free, it's not necessarily for absolute beginners. So just, just be aware that you know, just because I'm talking about JavaScript doesn't mean it's just for complete code newbies. There are people, um, you know, advanced beginners. A lot of these sites cater to be absolute beginners all the way to intermediate, um, even educative. They have some code newbie courses. They also have stuff called, uh, there's a course called Grokking the Coding Interview, Grokking the System Design Interview. If you have an interview with a fan company coming up and you want to practice for that, that's a more advanced course. Um, that's not a free one, but just to illustrate the example that some of these platforms are specifically for newbies, but others cater to a wide range of students. Okay, where do we take off from here? edX. So this is the one, this is the one that hosts CS50's Introduction to Computer Science by HarvardX. This video series is also on YouTube. Um, I did not put a candy next to this name, however, if I could right now put a candy next to CS50, Intro to Computer Science, it's, especially if you're a self-taught web developer, we tend to not teach ourselves computer science basics, and that's so important. It's gonna kick you, it's gonna kick you either in the throat or in the butt sometime down the line. Um, and better to just get it out of the way, and it's actually a really engaging course, Intro to Computer Science. Um, I think it's just a perfect, perfectly free resource that will get your mind right um, as far as what to expect, even just a few things in this coding journey. You, it's a lecture series. Um, you can take it on EDX uh, because there's also 2,500 other free courses offered by Ivy League schools. Like who'd have thought in 2020, this was even a few years ago, edX has been around for a few years, but who would have thought you can actually get an Ivy League education for free with these uh, massive open open enrollment. What is it called? They call them mocks, M-O-O-C's. It's massive open enrollment courses. Massive open, <laughs> massive objectified open courses. 
Anyways, I don't know what it stands for. But they're massive, they're open for everyone, and they're totally free. And they're produced uh, by Ivy League schools. Not all of them on EDXR, but, you know, you have the likes of MIT, Harvard, UC San Diego. Let's just go click on this. A lot of you guys have probably seen this one or started. Um, 140 institutions. Berkeley, holy crap, University of Texas, Boston University, Hong Kong Polytechnic. Um, yeah, that's just, it's just amazing. It's just amazing that we have this at our disposal. But of all of them to take, by far, I would say, uh, CS50's Introduction to Computer Science. And again, if you don't want to mess with the EDX, just Google it on YouTube. I think there's a playlist. Egghead.io. This one, I go back and forth with this one, but I did want to include it on the list because there are so many diverse open source topics. Gatsby theme authoring, beginner's guide to React. Hey, that's not so bad. What is 19 minutes? Write your first program with the Rust language, 19 minutes. And I think these are, okay, some of these are video based. Is this an audio? That's kind of cool. Okay, this is a video based one. Very cool design. Egghead IO. Um, a lot of their stuff is not for complete code newbies. If you're a code newbie, I'd say bypass Egghead IO. Um, more for advanced beginners and intermediate, um, but just some really cool stuff. Uh, even lessons, courses on VS Code and snippets here, um, just goes on and on, three pages worth. Apollo, Angular, Gatsby. Somebody asked me about Gatsby the other day. Um, it's a static site generator, one of many, but lots of cool stuff there. Okay, Free Code Camp. This is one that I think deserves a few minutes of our time. How many people have tried Free Code Camp? Raise your hand. I'll wait. Go ahead, I'll wait. Raise your hand. Take a swig. Free Code Camp. I am a Free Code Camp dropout. Free Code Camp is something we have mostly all of us have almost, how do I say this? Nearly everyone has used Free Code Camp that I know of. Most of my subscribers that I interact with have at least tried it. Um, wow, they're coming a long way. Their YouTube channel is freaking out of control with just so many videos. Um, and Free Code Camp itself, man, I don't know how Quincy Larson does it. He's the founder, but he's like, he's very active in what he does. Um, he's always posting blogs and stuff. So they've been around six years and more than 40,000 freecodecamp.org graduates have gotten jobs. It's pretty impressive. Let's just see what you guys have to say about Free Code Camp. Taib Tour says, I have. Italy says, me. Donovan, yep. <laughs> Yeah, Donovan says he's a dropout too from Free Code Camp. I mean, it's it's not my proudest moment, um, but it is what it is. Free Code Camp has a great community, and I think even though it didn't work for me, uh, I don't want that bias to get in the way of me recommending it. Um, that said, I do know a lot of people that that didn't really enjoy it. That said, again. I know some people who really did enjoy it. And honestly, Free Code Camp helps people in various ways. Um, you know, I really didn't get much from it early on in my career. Uh, but later on, last year, it was like a year and a half ago, uh, the YouTube channel manager reached out to me and was like, hey, RTC, do you want to do a video for Free Code Camp? I'm like, okay. I've been on Free Code Camp's channel twice already, maybe three times. I can't remember. Um, I think twice. But they're just, they're doing so many things. They're doing great outreach. And you want to know what? They're nonprofit. So their mission is a lot different than most of these on here. You'll never have to pay for any course on Free Code Camp ever, 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 ever. You'll never have to pay for anything. It is totally free, completely. They're not even trying to get your email address to sell it to a thousand different businesses. They're nonprofit. Um, they have 5,000 plus tutorials. Um, I think this is a great platform to explore. I think their YouTube channel might even be better than the website. 
Ooh, yeah. Their YouTube channel, they have like 14 hour courses. And again, because they're nonprofit, it's ad free. So if you're, you know, worried about that type of thing, don't because there's no interruptions. The, the YouTube channel is, it's on fleek. GA Dash, uh, this is General Assembly. So General Assembly is a free, is not a free. General Assembly is a coding bootcamp, but then they have this uh, additional site that is free to get you going with the basics. Goal Kicker Gymnasium. Geez, guys, <laughs> it's 8.30 and I'm only on number 13. So if you see any of these that pop out to you or you've had experience with them, just let me know in the comments because I want to get to some comments too. Gymnasium, Hacker.io, Khan Academy. And again, Paradoodly Do shared the link to this post um, so that you can go through this at your leisure. We're still in the general category. We haven't even gotten to HTML and CSS. Launch School, Microsoft Virtual Academy. You know, props to Microsoft. <sighs> After 25 years of producing really just so-so stuff, well, I mean, Windows 95, come on, maybe I should retract that statement. Uh, Windows 95 is like a classic. If I could operate, if I could use that every day for everything, I would. Side tangent. Last year, the Microsoft account on Twitter posted this person wearing a Windows 95 sweater, like a dad sweater or like a grandma sweater. I'm not sure which. It was just amazing. It was and it wasn't for sale. It was like a giveaway. I was like, man, if you guys sold that, I would buy it. I don't care the price. I don't care how long. I do care about the weight, but I don't care. It, name your price. I want that freaking sweater. Anyways, Microsoft has really, really upped its game with open source in the past couple years. We talked about this in a previous video I did, um, but with WSL, Windows, Windows Subsystem for Linux, um, VS Code, hello. Um, now they're in the game with GitHub. They own GitHub. And now GitHub just bought or acquired NPM. So technically Microsoft owns NPM now. This is interesting. This is interesting. Um, but this is not your father's Microsoft. If I just could go the, here real quick, it's just a clean interface. Uh, most of their stuff is Microsoft specific. So a lot of stuff with Azure DevOps, um, Windows Virtual Machine, Windows Virtual Machine, um, a lot of Azure stuff because that's their cloud. I don't know anyone who uses Azure. Uh, that's not to say anything. Just a just a. Random side note. I, I wish I did know someone who used Azure. I could learn more about it and not have to take these courses. Um, but yeah, if you're on the road to Microsoft or interested in a dot or a Microsoft technology like .NET, check out the docs here because they have a ton of free courses and modules. MIT Open Courseware. There is another uh, MIT isn't Ivy League, but it's world renowned. They have some free stuff there. Open Source Society University. This is actually a GitHub repo. Uh, man, it's a really popular one, which I guess really isn't saying any, anything, um, but the computer science repo is popping. Basically, what they're doing is offering you a complete education in computer science using online materials. So if you want that four-year degree experience, pop on to OSSU computer science. This is gonna take you a long freaking time, okay? This is not a two week tutorial. This is like a year of grind. Um, but I suppose it's better than four years if you're not interested in that piece of paper that says you're able to show up for school for four years. This could be a good alternative. PHP the right way, guys, this is like one of two resources that actually I felt could be included in this list. PHP the right way is PHP done pretty much right. Now, the first thing I always, always look for in a P, I'm already fatigued with PHP resources, dude. Like my biggest job is to share quality resources with people. It's one of my biggest things that I do. I like connecting people with the right resource. And when I can't, I can't, I'm not doing my job. Now, sometimes I've had to take matters into my own hands and create things when there was a need. People were asking me, how do I get a job in web development? 
you know, my personal advice, my, my uh, little emails, my little chats can only go so far. So what did I do? I wrote a book and I produced a course, how to get a job in web development. People were asking me about freelancing. I didn't have any good resources to share with them. What did I do? I wrote a book, published a course, Freelance Newbie, top rated on Udemy right now, as well as a uh, Amazon number one release, Freelance Newbie. Check it out. Um, PHP, I've, I've actually toyed around with doing a PHP course, but I just, ugh, I always have some excuse. So back to where we were talking, the very, First thing I look at when I'm checking out these resources is when the PHP material was updated because so many of these resources have been totally abandoned like five and six years ago. Um, and once you start getting into PHP, you're going to find that developers have really been spoiled with MDN, Mozilla Developer Network, which I think they changed the name. Did they change it to Mozilla Web Docs? It's not MDN anymore. Let me see. Mozilla. Web Docs. MD, okay, so it's MDN Web Docs. Previously Mozilla Developer Network. So can I still say MDN? Is this like kosher? We have been spoiled with this documentation as software developers. This is the cleanest, most organized, most logical and complete documentation uh, of JavaScript that you will find. Anyone else trying to create documentation for their language uh, would be wise to get some notes from the MDN web docs. So what I'm saying is once you start working with PHP and actually going to use the documentation, PHP's official documentation is going to have your jaw to the floor. Like they have Stack Overflow style um, uh, a, what do you call it? Just like a forum beneath each post. So here's what I'm saying. You know what? I'm getting too sidetracked. What I'm saying is a lot of the crap with PHP is totally outdated. This one isn't. It was last updated March 4th, 2020. Couldn't believe it. Gods be praised. Uh, you might have trouble learning PHP if you're a code newbie using this. Uh, but I think this is a good resource if you've been coding for a few weeks or a few months and know you want to do WordPress stuff, you know you want to work with PHP, um, check out this site. It talks about all the major stuff, virtualization, caching, databases, even the code style guide, uh, PSR standards, I assume. Yes, they have a PS, they're talking about PSR standards, recommendations, rather, I should say, security testing, uh, coding practices, dependency management, yeah, good stuff. Can you guys hear this table squeak? Okay. Hey, Jerry, how's it going? Thanks for the super chat, appreciate you. RTC, RTC, welcome. Thank you very much for that, appreciate your support. Scotch IO. Okay, we're going to get back to the list now. I, I went on a major tangent. I have 20 minutes to get through 80 resources. <laughs> Let's do it. Scotch.io. This one has some, um, some pretty fun stuff too. This is a really hip site. I, I love the, the interface. Now, some people might say, yeah, but what about the content? The content is good. But what really strikes me about a clean interface is that I want to spend more time on that site. Um, independent of content. So if your interface is good, if it's nice and clean, I'm more likely to spend time with your content. Just an insider tip for people thinking about starting their own platforms. You gotta have a clean, you gotta have a clean site. Scratch, this is another one we were talking about earlier with um, youth. And I love that respectable institutions are seeing the importance in this. Um, this is a site that encourages youth to discover the joys of coding. Uh, it's an MIT project. This is like their side gig. You know, you know you made it when you're like, yeah, I'm working on a side project, just a little side hustle with MIT, you know. Teach 80 million kids how to code, you know, no big deal. It's whatever. This is a really neat one too. Scratch. .mit.edu if you have young ones. Solo learn. 
This one has apparently tens of millions of users. Now I've heard of this one. Um, yeah, 30 million users? Like how many of the, I, I, I don't know. I just, this never comes up um, in my day to day. People really don't talk about this one at all, but I did check it out and it seemed, um, seemed fine for, for being free. Their code playground was pretty dope. All things considered, I think that's one of their big selling points or one of their big standout points. The Odin project, um, kind of like the coding bootcamp, Unity 3D. Unity 3D is also offering some other uh, services on a discount right now. That's the other thing with this, everyone's staying at home, self quarantine thing. A lot of tech companies are offering free stuff. Somebody in the Discord, in my RTC Discord, shared. Oh, what was it? Pack Publishing, I think, is doing some free stuff or discounted stuff. Or maybe they've always had free stuff. Um, but independent of that, a lot of companies are doing 50% off or just free upgrades and stuff. So check that out. Get your ears out there and check out what some of these deals are um, if you're able to, because they're pretty good deals. Udacity, Udemy, um, talked about this one to death over the course of my channel. Um, the courses are dirt cheap, but when we're talking about the free ones, um, very easy to run into resources that aren't that good. And putting together this list, I want it to be as inclusive as possible. I didn't want my personal biases to get in the way, but I also don't want to mislead people. Okay, Udemy is awesome, but it's also the king of junk courses. You have to, it's like a, it's like a course, like just minefield. You have to be careful where you step when you're trying to learn something on Udemy. Always make sure the courses are up to date. There are courses there that are five and six years old. Just don't get me started. There are other resources that are more modern. Don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. Maybe if you just need to learn something real quick or you want to, you know what, I'm not even going to push it. Check the date. Make sure it's as up to date as possible. W3 Schools, a CSS Grid Garden. I like this one. You know, they really need to install. So Look at this. Come on. Come on, people. It's 2020. Let's get some secure. Let's get some HTTPS action up in here. Come on. That's all right, though. Um, it's still pretty cool. It's a 28 level uh, interactive game where you plant a garden in order to learn the CSS Grid. The CSS Grid is tough. It's rad, but it's tough. Uh, this is a good one for that. What else? Flexbox zombies. Flexbox zombies. Flexbox zombies. Dude. This, if I could give two candy pieces to Flexbox zombies, I would. When I say it is ridiculously unforgettable, it is ridiculously unforgettable. It's so gamified. It's so gamified. It's so fun. Dave Geddes. Uh, produced a few of these. One of them is paid. Flexbox Zombies is not. Learn Flexbox for free. Course is open. Dude, it's rad. Um, he, we, I also covered his service workies game in here in this list for service workers. It's a cool one too. HTML dog, learn to code HTML and CSS. Um, Marksheet.io, MDN, MDN web docs. We covered this just a few minutes ago when I was kvetching about PHP. Bookmark this. This is something you're going to be using throughout your career. I, I don't use this every day, but I do refer to it every week. Um, just the canonical, the go-to, the truth. This is the source of web developer truth. Web technologies, is there like a drop down? They got your basics, HTML, CSS, scripting, graphics, even F SVG and WebGL. Math markup language. It's kind of dope. I didn't even know that was on there. That's pretty dope. You can get lost. This is a site. Um, this is like just encyclopedic. Don't read this from start to finish because you'll be like a skeleton with a headset by the time you get done with it. Also. This is a site known for its authentication software, but it has a glossary of modern JavaScript concepts. Uh, Eloquent JavaScript. Bet you didn't know this, or maybe you did. Maybe you did. I featured the paperback on this channel. This is a really good book. Not for code newbies. 
um, intermediate beginners to advanced beginners. I think are really going to enjoy this. Even uh, just intermediate developers are going to really enjoy this one. There are projects in here. Uh, it's well written. Yeah, it's just a nice clean book. And guess what? No starch press. My mission is to collect every no starch press book. They they do not have a bad title. No starch press is the shiznit. It is so ah. Uh, I just all of their books are awesome. All of their books are awesome. ES6features.org. This uh, features well, they only talk about ES6, and you know what's cool about this one is that they compare ES6 to ES5. Now ES6, for those of you new to this, it's in addition of JavaScript that just gives you more features, better functionality. It does things a little differently compared to ES5. Um, a lot of additions that just make our lives easier as developers. So ES6 is JavaScript. Um, it's just, it's got, it's a major update, I guess you could say. JavaScript.com. You have to live up to it if you're going to own JavaScript.com. This is a million dollar domain name. Uh, Plural site uh, snatched this up from some uh, domain flipper, no doubt. Somebody in 1999 was like, yeah, I'm going to go register JavaScript.com for six bucks. Ten years later, Plural site is like, hey, can I buy this for you from, from you for a million bucks? That's how I see it in my like domain flipping fantasy. I really don't know what the story is, but it's a free one. Um, try JavaScript. Plural site, most of their other stuff is paid. Um, but there are there are free things in on this site. There are a lot of free things on this site. Uh, let's see. JavaScript 30, West Boss. This is a cool project. West Boss is a cool dude. He knows his stuff. Uh, people love him. He is a cult favorite. Um, and with good reason. He's really engaging. Uh, he's highly active in the coding community and with his students. Um, and the 30-day challenge is a challenge. It has some cool projects. Uh, this is his free one. He also has, I'm only linking to things that are free, but I do want you to know if you guys are able to do the upgrades on some of these, definitely explore them. Um, this is the stuff. Look at all this stuff. Look at all these projects. These are all vanilla projects. This is a, I didn't stick a piece of candy on here because I don't think this course is a must, um, but it is approaching candy icon status. This is a great one. JavaScript 30 challenge is great. And um, if you guys are on Twitter, uh, there's a lot of people who participate with JavaScript 30 hashtag. All right. I have 10 minutes to talk about 60 more. <laughs> JavaScript is sexy. The... <laughs> guys, I don't even know what to say about that one. Um, the JavaScript beginners handbook, learn JS, modern JavaScript cheat sheet, node school, service workies. That's that other Dave Geddes a game. And with service workies, you learn how service workers work. Now, for now, this is free. Now this is free. I don't know what his plan is if he's doing like an extended free period. This is why this list is going to be maintained by me because I know some of this stuff is going to change. Um, but for right now, it's free. So take advantage of it because this, I played this game when it was in beta and there are only a few levels, but it was so cool. I've never seen anything like this uh, with software development training. It's a world. Dave Geddes created a world with this. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I never really needed to learn service workers, so I never came back to play this game. I might just play it for free if I'm bored one night um, because you know, service workers, I probably messed with once or twice because I really don't, um, haven't really dabbled in PWAs much. Watching code. Uh, this is an interesting one. Gordon Zhu has you watch how he does things and then you're challenged to basically imitate that. Uh, maybe I'm not even saying that right. I did this one. I actually, I took this a few years ago. And it was pretty good. He also does um, a YouTube weekly live stream. I'm not sure if it's still on YouTube, but you can go. You can go and participate in the YouTube stream um, as a student or just in the chat. Um, it's a small community. This is a this is an independent one that I think is pretty neat. You don't know JS. Now we're here at Python. 
not a lot of Python people in the Real Tough Candy audience, but Python is such an amazing language. It's a shame that um, Python really isn't that popular in web development. We do have frameworks like Django. We have um, micro frameworks like Flask. Those are, those are pretty much it. There is like one or two obscure CMSs that run on Python, but uh, yeah, it's just not, it's just relatively slow and um, just hasn't caught on. It hasn't, it hasn't reached critical mass and I wish it would because it's such a great newbie language. It's so, when you start coding Python as your second language, you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, where have I been? If Python is your first language and you're, you're gonna learn a second language, you're gonna be saying, why isn't this more like Python? Um, it was just beautifully and a beautifully designed language. Uh, it's a joy to work with. I just, I don't even, most of my projects, all of my projects in Python aren't web development related and I don't care because it's just so fun to create things with this language. Uh, my first project I did was with, uh, I guess you, maybe you could call it a web development project with Selenium or Selenium. Web driver, Selenium. Selenium or Selenium? Like I read these things, but I never hear anyone say them and I don't know how to pronounce them and I just look like a rube. Rube Tough Candy, Check IO. It's another gamified one. Code Combat, that's another kid's one. Google's Python class. This really isn't anything to write home about, um, but if you just want something simple, check this one out. There's also some older videos on here. Um, this, this stuff is not, like the, the basics of any language are never gonna change. The fundamentals of any language are never going to change. Um, so, you know, lists and sorting, I guess I should watch what I say. The fundamentals of a language will not change, but sometimes the syntax does. Um, even still, you're safe with this. You're, you're totally safe with this. Um, but I wanted to include it because it was, you know, Google offering it. It's, it's their style of doing things. So that was kind of interesting. LearnPython.org. There's Microsoft again. This is the one, one of the few courses on their site where it is a language not necessarily related to Microsoft. Short course, just an hour. Um, if it sucks, you never have to take it again. It's just an hour of your time. Okay. These are, this is the Ruby category. Number 54, App Academy Open. A lot of people, somebody emailed me the other day, shout out to that person who um, was just like, hey, RTC, thanks for the recommendation for App Academy Open. Uh, I do have a video review of this. Check this out. Check this out. This will be quick, I promise. The story. So one of my subscribers works at Google. Um, I, I think he's in a web adjacent position. Uh, he might be in security. I'm not sure. Uh, cyber security, not like holding a baton and beating people who are trying to get in. <laughs> uh, app security and so on. Um, he wanted to know my thoughts on App Academy Open and I waited an entire year to review this platform because I just wasn't excited about it. Just the thought of a coding bootcamp offering a free course totally turned me off and I said this is just going to be total junk like I don't want to review something I don't want to review something for 20 minutes if I'm just going to say it's not that good if I just wasn't feeling it but this course really impressed me basically what this is is the free edition of App Academy's entire in-person full stack curriculum App Academy itself is very picky about who it chooses. I think it has a 4%-ish acceptance rate. Now that number is from 2014. That's the last That's the last year I could get some solid info on, it was 4%. May have changed, probably not. And if it has changed, they're probably even more selective. So that's not to discourage anyone. Um, you know, if you wanna go to App Academy, definitely apply. The worst they can say is no. Um, but with App Academy open, you're getting that same thing without having to apply. Like I literally signed up for this thing in like two minutes. They sent me some welcome message in my email and I was cooking. Um, where you might have some roadblocks is that this is not, this is not your typical Udemy bootcamp. Like they teach you about data structures and algorithms. Um, and again, as web developers, it's usually something we're not exposed to. 
Um, so even though these videos, they might be 20 minutes, they might be 30 minutes, but you're gonna be spending eight hours just with those concepts. Uh, hash maps, binary trees, um, all, all sorts of problems and um, fundamentals even with data structures and learning how to create algorithms, learning why we have algorithms. I mean, that's a bit, that's not something someone can explain to you in just 30 seconds if you're new to software development. Like it's, this curriculum is over 1500 hours. So do the math. That said, um, I was really impressed with the curriculum. So good job App Academy. And in fact, I recently interviewed the director of the curriculum um, they reached out to me and were like, hey, RTC, will you interview this guy? Because it seems like you're excited about the platform um, and share more about what's going on with that. I said, absolutely. So we did a few videos. Um, check those out too. He, Curtis, he has some just great advice for people. Great, great insights uh, with the learning process and why uh, people should even be paying for uh, resources in the first place. Like we had, to, we had a really good conversation. Rails tutorial, Ruby in 20 minutes, Ruby monk. This was a secret, secret find. The illustrations on, on this one are just amazing. And I just, it's the first website of all these that I did where I felt a sense of peace. These uh, watercolors are so pretty and it has nothing to do with the curriculum, um, but the organization is great. And it's a, it's a simple site with four different courses for four different abilities, uh, Ruby Primer, Ruby Ascent, Metaprogramming and Ruby, and Metaprogramming Ruby Ascent. Um, so it is pretty progressive as far as the levels go. Um, it's just a nice, nice site where I got the fails. Git Handbook. Here are some Git resources, 856. Guys, can we do this? Git handbook, if you wanna learn Git, Git immersion, try Git. Uh, command line stuff, command line power user. This is a neat one, this is a video series. Join the course, uh, West Boss, Ayo, Mr. Boss, back online. Uh, video based and you're in good hands with Wes. He is a great instructor. Conquering the command line. Enough command line to be dangerous. Viking Code, sc code School also has one. Uh, UX UI, Career Foundry, the Encyclopedia of Human Computer Interaction. OMG. If we have any um, aspiring UX UI peeps out there, or even if you already are into it, you need to bookmark this. You need to bookmark this. This book will make you sick. This book is incredible. It's highly academic and it's very thorough. Uh, this is not your typical sports score type blog post. This is, uh, it also has a ton of videos, ton of links. It has, of course, all the references down here. Um, lots of empirical data, empirical research. It's just wow, 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 wow. Written, more than, written by more than 100 leading designers, best-selling author is an Ivy League professor's. Like, it has 4,000 pages. This is a must for designers and anyone interested in UX UI. I don't read it front to back, but just, you know, have it, have it at the ready. UX beginner, UX pin. Um, we have the blog section down here, Andrew McComb. Code burst, CSS tricks, that's a candy. That's a piece of candy. Chris Coyer is a cool dude. I've never met him, uh, but he gives the impression that he's pretty cool. <laughs> so shout out to Chris. I really enjoy his talks. I enjoy his site. I enjoy his transparency with how uh, he runs these things, this site along with CodePen. You know, he's, he's a developer. And this is the thing. A lot of these sites, you can tell when there's a personal touch given. Uh, CSS tricks, they practice what they preach. The CSS on this site is, is far out. Okay. It's, it's awesome. And they have a lot of resources here. Even their articles from five and six years ago. I mean, they must have thousands of articles by now. Great site. Uh, maybe overwhelming for some newbies, but eventually in a few weeks, I'm telling you, this is going to be a site where you're just like, oh, wow. Yeah. Look at this 6,000 articles. Now they have videos too. They have almost 200 videos.
So props and shout out to them. I have one minute to get through 30 more. Do you think it could happen? Site point, toots, plus, web dev simplified. Anya Kubov, here's the YouTube channels. Anya Kubov is a smaller YouTuber. I recently discovered her. She uh, codes games in JavaScript, mostly games. Uh, the Nokia 3310 snake game, Whack-A-Mole and Frogger. Uh, she's from London, or she's based in London. Very interesting channel. Coding Garden with CJ. We talked about the katas earlier. He does those on this channel. Coding Garden with CJ. Colt Steele has his own YouTube channel and he's doing a free he's doing a free YouTube course right now. Check that out. Someone in the Discord shared that too. Uh, by the way, if you want to join the Discord, paradoodly, share that Discord link. It's in the video description box. If you can't figure it out, I'll get to it. Um, but yeah, come check out our Discord. It's a smaller community, but we we have some great conversations. Um, we have fun. It's a fun little Discord. Uh, he has also a 10 part webpack course on YouTube, not available anywhere else, anywhere else. Dave Mahler, he has a few videos on Git, very small channel. He doesn't really update anymore. In fact, he doesn't update anymore. Um, but these Gits, these Git videos, they're pretty timeless. Dev Ed, shout out to Dev Ed. He's also a subscriber to Real Tough Candy. He just popped in a live stream one night. I'm like, oh, Dev Ed, what's up? Dev Ed, um, he's more a design, but he also does some coding stuff. Free Code Camp. Guys, we talked about this earlier on. Do yourself a favor. Um, geez, why am I not subscribed? Um, they have almost 2 million freaking subscribers. The Net Ninja, that's a great channel too. I learned a lot of stuff from his channel as a code newbie. Peter Fisher. Shout out to Peter Fisher, who's holding it down with PHP. Um, between this and the other resource I showed, Peter Fisher, um, uploads multiple videos, not just on PHP, but he does Python stuff, HTML5. He talks about freelancing. He has guests on, um, this is a cool channel. Tech with Tim does lots of Python. Traversy, guys, you know, I got to give the candy. You got, yeah, I got to give that icon to Traversy. He just hit a million subs. Um, and basically picking up where the new Boston left off. Like he's the king of developers on YouTube. Hands down. Hands down. We've all seen a Traversy Media video. Web Dev Simplified. This guy has a cool channel and it's growing really fast. His um, blog, which is also a newsletter, is really good. I post a lot of stuff in the Discord. Um, of, of what he does, of his creations. WordPress, wordpress.tv, WordPress beginner, gotta give some love to WordPress. Machine learning, just cause, Google AI, machine learning mastery. This is a kind of a cool site. This is a really expansive site. A data analysis, data quest, elite data science. We have O'Reilly. Guys, O'Reilly is a good publisher too. And they have free uh, data books. They also have free uh, books in other categories. And I was checking out the web development section, but oh, I guess they do. They have transforms and CSS and web page size, speed, and performance. So um, O'Reilly is a great name, great publisher. In, in, I don't love them as much as No Starch, but O'Reilly has some pretty good titles. Springboard, got some free stuff there. Cybersecurity, Cybrary has a free course. Hacker 101 has a free course with a capture the flag game. Master of Project also has one. And then down here, finally, mobile app development, Android developers. This is the official documentation for Android. Probably not the best place to start um, learning stuff because there's just so much. If you're a code newbie, I mean, um, probably don't start here. Um, maybe try maybe try the Google developers training. These are these have videos and that could be easier for beginners. And as you see, they even say beginner level. They also have stuff for um, more intermediate and advanced developers. 99 learn app making. This is a seven day iOS course. Start developing iOS apps with Swift. And guys, if I have any iOS developers out there or aspiring iOS developers, I know this video is about free resources, but if you can afford the upgrade, Angela Yu, on Udemy is awesome. She's awesome. 
Go get yourself an $11.99 coupon if you're trying to become an iOS developer and grab her Swift course. I think it was updated. It's been updated very recently. She keeps her updates pretty decent. She also has a code bootcamp. I'm not a, uh, I'm not, I'm a bigger fan of Andre Negoy's bootcamp for various reasons. We could talk about this in another video. Um, but if you do end up going with her coding bootcamp, you're in good hands there too. Um, the courses that I have seen of hers are, are really good. And it's just like, yeah, I don't know what else to say. They're great instructor. Finally, number 101. Guys, I'm four minutes over time, but what can you do? Pramp. Pramp. Pramp, mother trucker, pramp. Um, you practice mock interviews on Pramp. Now, a few people in the Discord have used this. I know Jim has used this many times. Jim, are you here in the chat? If you are, let me hear you. Let me hear what you think of this. Basically what you do, now this is free, this is a free resource. You get to practice mock interviews with strangers. What, I mean, who doesn't want to sign up for that? <laughs> this is like the most intimidating thing. So Pramp gives you questions, right? So you, you log on, fill out some information, and then they pair you with somebody on your level. And you take turns interviewing each other. So uh, the first round, let's say, um, I'm online and then someone else is, and I'm reading them the question that Pramp provides. And I'm watching this other person type. So I'm looking at the prompt and I'm think thinking like, okay, this isn't the right answer. And then you just go back and forth with that. So it's not like you're gonna get fired if you fail the interview, um, but it isn't for the faint of heart. It is not for the faint of heart because you are uh, answering real questions provided by Pramp um, with strangers. I'm interested. Has anyone else tried this? Because um, I know there's no way I would ever voluntarily sign up for this service. And can you imagine? I just imagine it being like TikTok or something. Like, how can you not? How how do you prevent trolls from just like logging on and doing gross things? Like, don't even get me started. Um, has anyone here used Pramp? Let's see what the um, chat has to say. Tommy, Tommy on says CS tri CSS tricks, one love, totally. Main course engagement. Hey, what's going on? How's it going? Cabell says, you're awesome. I'm looking for a junior web dev job. What do you think about WordPress dev? I hate it, but should I learn it uh, to get a first job easier? Well, if you hate it, if you hate it, I'm not gonna recommend you do something you hate. If you're just feeling so-so about it, I would say, you know what? It's a great way to get inside the industry. But if you hate it, I wouldn't do it. There's no sense in that. You've already worked hard enough um, to learn this stuff. And if it absolutely just grinds your gears, there's just better ways to do it. There's better ways. Keep looking for jobs that you know cater to beginning web developer skills, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a front-end framework. Um, you know, there are other ways to get into the industry. It is true in my experience and from my uh, just talking with people. Now, this isn't a scientific discovery. This is just my own experience. WordPress jobs are a great entry level position because you're not necessarily coding all day. You might be updating plugins. You might be debugging CSS. You might be customizing title tags or something. You are working with the code but it's not as intense as a software engineer job or something that is more code centric. You get what I'm saying? Um, as a WordPress developer, a lot of times you will be working on plugins, you will be working on themes, um, but a lot of the stuff is already in place for you um, and you're building, you're building smaller features or smaller things on top of a big feature that already exists. And it's great experience. It's a great way, you don't, great way to get into that mindset of coding and problem solving. Uh, spend a year as a WordPress developer doing PHP and yeah, I mean, you could, you could easily level up. You could easily level up, but if you hate it, I don't wanna tell people to do stuff that they hate. All right, guys, this is it. Developers, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Let's go through the comments here and just see what's going on. Austin says, Flexbox Zombies looks really cool. It is, it is. Tony says, I, Tony says, I hate MDN. <laughs> Jay says, lots of junk on you to me. Yep, it's true. 
T Fire says solo learn is actually really good. It's especially good uh, if you're trying to learn a new language and you already know coding basics. Okay, cool. And then Sora Dev says uh, he used so he uses solo learn on his iPhone or on his phone. I don't know where I saw that I. Hack says, are there any specific Django resources? You know, I put the word out on Twitter the other night, last night, because someone else asked me uh, for Django resources. Check my Discord. Um, there's a book that someone recommended. I have not read the book, but someone recommended the book. Also, someone else recommended Anthony, Anthony Beckford. Shout out to Anthony. He recommended Traversy. Traversy apparently has some uh, Django videos. Now, I don't recall watching those videos, but you seriously, you can't go wrong with the Traversy video. He often has you build a project. You have something to show off after that hour long crash course or whatever. Um, it can be a great starting point. But yeah, the Django thing, Django and PHP are resources that I'm just really trying to dig for, um, especially with new developers, uh, with the WordPress thing and the PHP thing. Because WordPress, like we just talked about, is a great, great way to enter uh, a tech career without um, as much pressure that you might see in a total programming environment. I'm using air quotes. <laughs> okay, getting ridiculous. Guys, thanks for watching. My time here is done. Paradoodly do pop that link in. Thank you so much for moderating this. Um, guys, Tomorrow, we are going to be premiering that two-hour technical interview. It's a mock technical interview with two junior devs. You don't want to miss it. Um, if you have some time, come to the premiere. I'm going to be in the chat. Uh, premieres basically mean uh, just like a movie premiere. You Sometimes when there's a premiere, the, the stars of the movie come to the theater. Well, that's kind of like what a premiere is on YouTube. The video is premiering. I'm going to be there typing with you guys, chatting with you guys, and talking about the video. Um, and I hope you can make it because it was just, it's, it's, it's a really good, it's not only educational, it's pretty entertaining. Shout out to Michael and Carlos. Those are the two junior developers who got grilled yesterday uh, as part of this, as part of that interview scenario. You're going to see that tomorrow, probably around, um, let's say 4 p.m. Central. Is that, is that good? Or maybe, maybe earlier? I'll say between two and four. I'm going to set it up um, in a little bit here. But enough babbling. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Shout out to Jerry Tierney for the super chat. What up, GC? Cheryl, thanks for tuning in and welcome to the channel. We will see you guys in the next video. Take care of yourself. Socially isolate. I know we're all kind of getting tired of it, but now that we have this time to ourselves, Let's get out and make the best of it. Let's learn. Let's learn some of this stuff. Let's level up. I know I am. Um, it's been very productive here. It's been a very productive two weeks here since the world has flipped upside down. So stay safe. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one, guys. And uh, yeah, peace out.